we're 500 million years ago. You can see here on the top bar the history of our planet. We're going to concentrate on this circle here at the beginning of the time where animals become the prevalent form of life in our planet. But the Cambrian animals are very different from those macroscopic forms of the Ediacaran, and they're quite different from what evolved from them that we see around us today. The next question is where? So the Ediacaran is actually, sorry, the Cambrian is quite well registered. It's a good record of Cambrian in South Australia. We've got most of the, uh, of Kangaroo Island is actually uh, Cambrian, but also in the Fleurier Peninsula and the Adelaide Hills, as well as the northern part of uh, the um, uh, York Peninsula and in the Flinders Ranges. And now let's go on to what? What happened during the Cambrian? Why is this one of the most important times to tell us about the evolution of life in our planet? So one, mon uh, one of the main reasons is because we have the oldest unequivocal fossils of most of the animal groups we see today. Yes, there are some hints at uh, what's happening in the Ediacaran, but by this time we've got unequivocal early echinoderms, so the ancestors of sea urchins and sea stars. We also have the ancestors of mollusks, like the snail and squids, etc. We've got really good record of sponges, some of the early less complex organisms. And one of the most impressive and important groups in the fossil record, the arthropods. They're very, very common at the time, very diverse in shape and form, and they're actually the most diverse today, as you know. So the reason for their success is because of those appendages, those legs that have the jointed appendages allow them to adapt to many different styles of life. Each of those appendages can actually turn into something slightly different, a bit like Swiss Army knife. And that's what we'll see with some of the fossils we'll see today. The next thing that happens in the Cambrian is the appearance of predation. Predation, the capacity of some animals to feed on other things, that is, there's no evidence of that in the Ediacaran. We've got thousands of fossils from Ediacara and none of them have a single bite mark. However, by the time we get to the Cambrian, we've got animals like this here. We've got large predators. This is a baby animal of carrot. They grew to about 80 centimeters in length. And what we have here is, is a, a predator that has very good vision at the top and you can see an eye here. Each of those little uh, polygons, those hexagons, are actually the lenses in the eye of Anomalocaris. Each of those lenses produces like a pixel in a camera, so the more lenses, the more pixels, the better uh, vision. And like a good predator, like eagles today or tigers, they have really acute vision and that's also present in this apex, the top predator of the Cambrian seas, Anomalocaris. One other important aspect of animals that are predating on others is the capacity to capture that prey. In Emu Bay, we've got Anomalocaris two species, this one, which is first found in Canada, and then this species, which is endemic, only happens in South Australia, in Kangaroo Island. These are the appendages. So we've got the eyes, we've got the appendages, and we also find other parts of the animal. We've got a perfect predator, and it preyed on animals around it. So what sort of animals, you might ask? Good question. We find its fossilized poo here in, in Emu Bay, and it actually has the bits and pieces of broken up trilobites. So we knew that these larger predators were capable of feeding in some of the other forms around them, including trilobites. So also with that capacity to predate on other animals, those prey had to actually defend themselves. So how did they do it? These are very sharp spines and they can crack a lot of things. So what happened is that during the Cambrian, animals develop exoskeletons like this hard mineralized uh, shell that the trilobites have around them. Same with some of the bivalved organisms in the ocean, like the brachiopods. And some of the soft organisms, the ones that don't have any mineral parts, also had ways to protect themselves with spines, a little bit like the consistency of our nails. And also, this is related to arthropods, like a marine velvet worm. And this is actually probably related to sponges. They had their whole body covered in spines. That is telling us that there is a lot of pressure from predators. And one of the other aspects that we, c we see with this is not only new features appearing in their bodies, but also new behaviors. These animals are changing completely from what happened in the Ediacaran. There was evidence of moving around in that seafloor, but once we get to the Cambrian, these animals actually have muscles in them that allow them to swim above the seafloor and actually be able to exploit new uh, uh, energy. In this case, we've got an, uh, an ancestor of ourselves. These are the uh, Vetulicolians. It's 
a distant relative, and they actually have a tail for swimming in the water column, and they've got an, an, an anterior part capable of capturing the plankton that was already in the oceans. But not only swimming up into the water column, also burrowing and digging into the seafloor. And that's typical of worms. Worms back then, as they, as they do today, normally exploit the soil and they dig under the, the seafloor in the sediment to capture their, uh, the, uh, their prey and also to hide from other predators. So we've got evidence of animals escaping those big predators like Anomalocaris. Overall, we've got some of the best fossils in Australia. And in particular, during the Cayman, we've got the first, the best fossil site in all of the Southern Hemisphere. So like here, this is our fossil site. This is Emu Bay Shale in the north coast of Kangaroo Island. It's about 512 million years old. And we've got the complete assemblage, the whole community of animals living there. Not just the ones with the shells, like the trilobites, etc., but also the ones with the soft parts, the ones like Anomalocaris that didn't have any mineralized part. Not only that, we find their eyes, their gills, their guts with the last meal, etc. Not like the bones that we're going to see later in the fossil record, which is the source of information. Here, we've got the complete community. We've got those trilobites with spines swimming and crawling on the seafloor. We've got the sponges, and we also have the animals swimming in the water column, those big, large predators like Anomalocaris. Undoubtedly, we're in front of the coolest fossils in South Australia. We're off on a journey to long, long ago To a world that no human has seen Except in the paleo digs where we find The shadows of things that have been Such shadows from back in the Cambrian age When life was aquatically bound a strange and peculiar watery world where the first trilobites could be found. One, two, three, the trilobites lived in the sea. One, two, three, and swam through the waters with ease. One, two, three. They did so for millions of years One, two, three And then they all disappeared There is an island down under I hear Where kangaroos currently roam but 500 million years ago, some early trilobites called home. Balcara Kanaya, a stangier too, Redlichia, lived here as well. Megafaranaspus and Imuella, each with a story to tell. One, two, three, the trilobites lived in the seas. One, two, three, and swam through the waters with ease. One, two, three, they did so for millions of years. One, two, three, and then they all disappeared one two three the trilobites lived in the sea one two three and swam through the water with ease one two three they did so for millions of years one two three and then they all disappeared. <laughs> <laughs>